What advice would you give Amber's future girlfriend? Simple. Just don't go there. <laughs> What's wrong with Karina Kaboom? She's a nice lady. Nurse, clear my schedule. Oh, monsters, monsters, monsters. Mr. Skunk, there's a skunk. He knows Amber Lynn Reed. Excuse me, Mr. Skunk, do you know Amber Lynn Reed? What about 40 Beauty? Don't run away. The truth is behind you. Hello, everybody. So in today's video for the low introductory price sale of literally absolutely nothing. That's right. You heard it here last. We're going to be taking a look at Amberlynn Reed's amazing Instagram story. Uh, I personally find it a bit embarrassing to continuously post Instagram stories, implying things about your ex, about you being desperate for other girls. Isn't this a surprise? Girly pops, girlies, but... Rinse, lather, Delulu. The second part of this video is Foodie Beauties raging on the community page, her deleted community page posts, as well as her ridiculous new live stream. She is actually so upset. And I'm going to tell you what she's upset about. She's so angry that people do not treat her the same way as other people that are not on camera. And uh, Foodie Beauty is, if you don't know, she's become bedbound. She is immobile. And so she's still raging about other people. Rinse, lather, Delulu. I think she should focus on her health instead of raging, but that's just my opinion. All right, so we're going to get into all the drama or my name is in Wilbur Bob. None of those are my names. As always, everything I'm saying is just for entertainment purposes only. I am only sharing opinions not facts about publicly accessible information made public by public figures i would always urge you to please not go to these people's channels and leave them mean-spirited negative discouraging disparaging comments just for entertainment purposes only okay so these are amber lynn's instagram story for the past week that i haven't gotten to first of all i wanted to show you where she is trying to meme herself yet again uh, basically, clips of Amber Lynn saying that she ordered a veggie sandwich, but got chips and a different sandwich. Have gone viral on TikTok, and she's known on TikTok as the girl who lied about, you know, like a sandwich. So she is just posting memes of herself. All I can say is, first of all, if you had the foresight to laugh at yourself, and to be in on the joke, maybe you could meme it. Maybe you would have been the first person to get like 30 million views on TikTok over it. But Amber Lynn always wants to pretend that she doesn't lie to her audience. So now she's trying to meme herself. You're not in on the joke and it's not funny. So just stop memeing yourself. Okay. So as you all know, wifey broke up with her on 4th of July. She's been obsessively calling her, broke the no contact thing. Somebody said um, in my comment section recently that it was wifey like was it not wifey that asked for no contact well here's the thing amber lynn told us an unreliable narrator for you so i you know <laughs> take everything with a grain of kermit you know uh basically amber said that wifey didn't want to be her friend anymore but amber was going no contact aka amber was obsessively calling her i love you i miss you ever since she moved to oklahoma this is based on what she said all right isn't even an opinion. And then she went no contact. I've said this 700 times. No contact is for you to heal and move on from the person and never want to contact them again. No contact is not what Amber Lynn is doing, which is let's just wait until the convenient time to text wifey. Okay, so here are all of her Instagram stories. Some of them I can't even show here, okay? is She is purposely picking out certain lyrics of a song and putting photos. Is this you, Amber? Beautiful photos of you. Okay, uh, she's purposely putting like certain lyrics of songs to try to insinuate what those lyrics are saying okay first we have i don't even love you girl and sometimes i'm so ashamed only want you for then we have you memorize the lines of my um you want to get to know me. easy to change me clear me this is probably about a new girl the first one was about wifey I'm feeling on and uh, until the morning. To be continued. How come you're not doing any work in the morning, Amberlynn? Amberlynn worked 19 minutes this week. You know, honestly, 
I know we're going to talk about this Instagram story. For her to say anything about reaction channels who literally work seven days a week or five days a week or six days a week actually putting out content when she literally posted a six-minute video and before that she posted a 13-minute video. She worked for 19 minutes this week. What do you do when you're not working? I don't think she has the right to say anything about any reaction channel since she's working 19 minutes a week. And by the way, I've said this before. It's self-employment. You can work as little or as much as you want. But my thing is you can work for your six minutes or 19 minutes a week. Why are you saying things about reaction channels? Anyways, as far as this Instagram story, look, it's obvious that she misses wifey and is embarrassing herself, in my opinion, on Instagram with these weird, desperate pleas for wifey to know how much she's thinking about her. She also is clearly super, super desperate for a girl online. I have to tell you something. I've been doing this for a long time. The reason that I bring that up from time to time every day is because I have actually never seen a public figure do this. Oh, no. Okay? I can understand that what she's doing is technically not a big deal with just taking lyrics out of a song and posting it on Instagram. Sometimes people like to share music that they like or, you know, they want to emphasize a point. But everything she has been doing on Instagram and on TikTok is trying to find a new girly. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe she needs to get a ride to Target or Walmart. And she needs somebody to drive her around or beg wifey to take her back. She's made videos asking for wifey to talk to her and, oh, she's heavy on my mind. This woman doesn't want you. And the more that you keep romanticizing your ex and the more that you keep for some unknown reason thinking that being desperate on the internet is going to get your girlfriend or get your girlfriend, ex-girlfriend back, it won't. The more that you vibrate a frequency of lack to the universe the less you'll get. Stop being desperate for girlies and ex-wifey. Stop romanticizing your ex. Focus on your health, your life. Or how about if you really want a new girlie, how about stop doing things like this? I'm going to show you, in my personal opinion, I love me some Anne Boleyn Reed, the most desperate TikTok I have ever seen her post, or for that matter, anyone. Okay, so Amber Lynn is lip syncing in her new TikTok that I will be whoever, anything you want. And then there's the person saying, oh, you know, you're acting dumb. And Amber's like, yeah, I could be that for you. <laughs> Basically, the point of this TikTok, honestly, I am so exhausted with this. The point of this TikTok is Amber Lynn will be whoever her new partner girly wants her to be. She will just be whoever the other person wants and needs. Just be in a relationship with her. Good evening. If you are currently from another planet, if you are an alien, please consider taking me home to our home planet because I can't do this anymore. Amber, why are you so desperate on social media for a girly? Almost nobody is posting TikToks like this and... For them, it's a blatant, obvious joke. Here, we know you're serious. And before you tell us that you're just joking around on Instagram, on TikTok, look, here's the bottom line. If people, and this is some advice, I'm not saying that it's wrong to be desperate because some people just are. And I think a lot of people have been there once or twice, okay? It's fine. The problem is when you show other single people how desperate you are, desperation is not a thing that you want to be putting out as your energy because desperation is different than loneliness. Loneliness has hope while desperation is forever. You can't be that desperate to get a target driver, can you? Okay, if I'm single and most people will agree and they get the feeling that the person will do whatever you want them to be or whoever you want them to be, they're so desperate, they're not going to be in a relationship. Basically, my point is with all of these desperate, embarrassing TikToks and Instagram stories, what Amberlynn Reed is doing, I know I say this all the time, my brand is to repeat. What she's doing is just letting all the girlies know to not date her. You're talking people out of dating you. And it's a shame because if you are that desperate to have a girly, don't you understand that you got to be cool? Look, I think that dating is much like the practice of law. It's all about faking out your opponent, okay? Like, you know how, like, when lawyers are at trial or something, they play a game with one another? Not all the time. Like, if you see, you know, there's always a game being played, in my opinion, not a fact, but I'm 100 on this. When lawyers fake each other out when they're in court, right, it's because it's a game. The game is called who can fake each other out the most to win. 
Well, I hate to break it to you. Yes, you should always be yourself in dating, but it, there's always game playing in dating. And unfortunately, what happens is even if you're desperate, you have to hide it. You can't show people that you're that desperate, Amberlynn, because you're talking people out of driving you to Target, okay? She's not looking for the one. She's looking for the one to drive her to Target. Red flags are us. That's you. If I met a person and it doesn't matter who they were and they were visibly desperate and doing this is what she's doing on all her Instagram stories and her TikTok. Half of the time she's obsessing over wifey, talking about how obsessed she is over wifey, how she misses her. She's texting her. She wants to talk to her. These are all things that Amber has had the breakdowns on social media about. Oh, she's afraid of, you know, actually like she didn't want to decorate for the holidays because of this and all this stuff. And the other half of her time that she's spending on social media, she's trying to do these thirsty traps for ladies. Like she's trying to be very thirsty and desperate and showing the ladies that she'll do anything to be in their life. Part of dating is playing the game right, Amberlynn. Stay in the game because you're not even, and by the way, I know that people don't like it, that there's game playing involved in like dating. And I don't mean you shouldn't be yourself, but don't, if you're desperate, don't show it. Like, why can't you just let it come to you naturally? The more that you are telling the universe that you are vibrating on this frequency of, I don't have anybody, I'm desperate to have one, the more that the universe will return this to you. And even if they don't, the bottom line is, are you not embarrassed to be telling the world that you will do whatever it takes to be somebody's girlfriend? Seriously, you're an adult with a job, you can support yourself, whatever you've achieved in your life. Do you really think this is how you want to present yourself? I'm desperate for a girly. Move on to Foodie Beauty. Foodie Beauty is currently bedbound. She is unable to walk. She literally said, quote, this is a quote from yesterday's live stream or the, whatever, the night before's live stream, where she says, I've reached my limit with walking, okay? And she says it's due to sciatica. She's getting some kind of shots done. She doesn't even know what's in the shots. She thinks it's similar to something, like, unbelievable. Okay, she claims that she is no longer walking, okay? She posted a photo of herself, which I wish everybody all the best with her health, as always. I hope that you can recover. I don't really believe her that it's sciatica. I don't even know if she knows what it is. Okay. So she's in a very concerning situation as we've been talking about this. Okay. All right. Like we've been talking about this for a few days. She goes and she does a live stream. And I just wanted to play you one snippet of this live stream that blew me away. Listen to this before I get to my health update. Wrote a comment. Girl, now these haters are out there suggesting that you can't show yourself because your hubby is treating you. Good lore with their insanity theories. So if you're going to apply that logic to me, the, the, the streamers who apply that logic to me or whoever, why are you not applying that same flawed logic, by the way, to yourselves? Because so many, I would say a, either half or the majority of streamers or content creators or whatever don't cam up. So does that mean that you're being, is that why you're not camming up? Like that's just... To me, that's apply the same logic to yourself. So let's just talk about this. This blew me away for a few reasons. First of all, I just want to say, all right, Foodie Beauty is now bedbound. She says in this live stream that she thinks that the last trip that she took to Kuwait really has hurt her because she had to sit for 12 hours. It really messed with her where now she's immobile, okay? Uh, yeah, everybody told you not to run back to your cheating husband. I want you to think about it this way. If she never went back to Kuwait to her cheating husband, she would have been walking around right now. She would have been fine. I think that whatever your health issues are, you don't even know what they are. Why are you raging online about reaction channels? And I'll show you some of her deleted posts in a minute. Why are you doing that when you have more pressing matters? Now, I can understand. I can get that when something terrible happens to you, you're trying to take your mind off of things. And that's why she's still streaming. It's still her job. I'm not saying she shouldn't stream. I get it. And I even understand the idea of, hey, you want to take your mind off things. But basically, nothing has changed, even though there's a huge change in life for her. She literally said that she's reached a limit with walking. She can't walk anymore. And you're still raging about why reaction channels don't cam up so obviously she cannot get over the reaction channels that talk about her so you know what let's just talk about it if something terrible like that would happen to me or to anyone i know nobody would go online to rage but you are okay
So let me just talk about this whole uh, cam up thing. All right, we've talked about this here on my channel. I talk about it a lot, where Foodie Beauty was always very jealous that people that talked about her. She doesn't really try to hide this either. Uh, people that talked about her are not on camera making the same money as her, and in a lot of cases, way better money than her. In my opinion, FFG making way better money than Foodie Beauty, and the person is not on camera. Foodie Beauty has always discussed and talked about to, like to the point of Kermit's coming home so much that all these reactors need to cam up and cam up. She always had a visual channel, as I said. People tuned in to see her. If you think that leaving off camera and not being on camera, Chantal, is going to drastically change people saying negative things about you, they won't. They will continue to say bad things about you. They remember you. They know everything you've done. This is not going to change. But look, now she is off camera. So think about it. She's now able to get similar streams for now because I think that people are so concerned about what's going on with her. And see, now there's the element of surprise. Nobody really knows what's going on in her life. And that's why people want to watch these streams because now they can't visually consume it. Okay? Can't see it. All right. So one would think that now that Foodie Beauty has finally gotten what she's always wanted in life, which is she doesn't have to be on camera, nobody is seeing her, nobody's consuming her visual likeness, no one can say anything about, you know, her looks or anything like that, terrible superficial stuff, she would be happy, right? I figured that once now that she is off camera, she's done talking about reaction channels, she finally got what she wanted. She is now making money on YouTube, not showing herself, which is what she was so jealous. And this this is the big thing. This is the number one thing that she is so angry about. I'm so broken. And lonely. That she could not make money without her likeness. Now people are, you know, continuing to make money without their likeness. And she can't. Now she's literally doing exactly what the reaction channels are doing. And she's still not happy. And here's why. Because the root of your problem is your opinion that you should not be discussed despite being super controversial and lying about a lot of stuff and just in general in general you just don't want to be talked about you want to respond to everything now that you finally are in the position of the reaction channels where you're offline like visually you're still not happy because your real problem is you can't feel what they feel, which is reaction channels are confident in themselves and they say what they want. And, you know, listen, reaction channels get criticism, but they're just you're just not in the same place. Like she may be off camera, but she'll never be getting the type of like feedback that the reaction channels get and that is why she's still raging you can't just become someone that you're not chantal she actually believed if she can go on camera it's one thing but now that she believed oh you know if only i could be off camera i don't need to cam up and you know like i can be just like the reaction channels no because the kind of response you will get whether on camera or off will always be negative it won't be exactly at all whatsoever like the reaction channels she's just mad at the reaction channels she can never be them you can be off camera for the rest of your life you'll never get their feedback she wants positive feedback she wants to be respected she wants to be loved get over it okay so as far as that little comment that she made all right so People on YouTube are not treated like the next person. I know for sure that I was never treated like anybody else that did the same job as me. Do you know why? Because everyone on YouTube is treated differently. Recently, yesterday, we discussed how Amber Lynn expected people to drop their biases for her. Like somebody dared to take a picture of a public figure, Amber Lynn Reed, and Amber Lynn Reed said, you need to stop being biased about me. This is wrong. After she gave permission, after she's been begging people to take pictures of her, it's legal, and she's a you know public figure. Um, the thing is, is that I'm never going to drop the fact that Amberlynn filmed a child's final resting place and filmed people without their consent for years and now expects not to be filmed after she gave consent to be filmed. So you see, Amber, it, it's impossible to treat you as if you haven't done that. Why do I bring this up? The reason that the reaction channels would no one would think that they're off camera because there's something happening in their personal life or there's something happening you know in their relationships that they're being mistreated is because that's not their story 
A lot of reaction channels, you don't know, you know certain details of their private life, you don't know the full story with you. The reason that people assume that you're trying to hide things and that maybe you're not in Kuwait, she obviously is, and maybe that, you know, something is going on with your husband. My husband! Is because you've showed that stuff on the internet. People are not going to apply the same quote unquote flawed logic to the reaction channels that are off camera, Chantal, because there's no reason to assume that they're having problems in their relationship and that's why they're off camera. While recently you had a giant scandal where your husband cheated on you while you were in the hospital in Canada and asked a woman to come live with him. That is why you cannot apply the same logic. Look, in very simple terms, no, you cannot treat Amberlynn Reed the way that you can treat another person that has never filmed people without consent for five, seven years. No, you cannot treat some reaction channels that have always been offline as far as their likeness and never, quote unquote, cammed up, okay? Because they're not living the same life as Foodie Beauty. Chantal, people are saying that maybe there's something going on with your husband. And by the way, I am convinced that they don't live together. I'm allowed to have this opinion. Uh, one of the things that I saw mentioned, like, in a lot of comments is that the idea of, so when Foodie Beauty was streaming in the past, she would always say, hey, you know, I have to be quiet because my husband is sleeping. Now she literally, the like the stream that I'm talking about, she streamed it at like 3 a.m. her time. Why did she have to be quiet? Why isn't her husband sleeping? My opinion, he's not there. There has been, and this is just an opinion, not a fact. My opinion is that there has drastically been a large difference. Yeah, I don't think that her husband, her husband and her have stopped talking. I think they still interact. He's obviously helping her, taking her to the clinic, but I do not believe that he lives there. She's now talking loudly in the middle of the night. She used to say, my husband is sleeping. Which one is it? Obviously, in my personal opinion, not a fact, uh, she's talking loudly in the middle of the night because he's not there. I don't think that they live together anymore. And that's the point. The reason why people are having these different theories doesn't mean that they're true is because of what we know about you. You've given us information publicly that your husband cheated on you. It's over. He cheated on me. And you cannot possibly compare yourself to reaction channels that don't have the same story. That's why they wouldn't be using this logic for themselves. The bottom line is what you see in that clip is the audacity of her to think that she is the same as the reaction channel. So this, I've said this before, and I'm going to end on this and we'll look at her uh, deleted community page post. The bottom line in the situation, in my personal opinion, is no one on YouTube can possibly be compared to one another as far as let's treat everybody the same. No one treats the reaction channels. Even when you compare one reaction channel to another, I see that a lot of people get away with certain things. Other people could never get away with certain things. Some people are doing this. Other people would never get away with this, right? Because everyone on YouTube is treated differently. That's why Amberlynn Reed asking for people to treat her a certain way is never going to happen. If there's a public figure that feels that like, oh, wow, you know, uh, somebody came too close to them, maybe they'll get more sympathy. Maybe. I feel that all public figures can be filmed and you sign up for this and all that other stuff. But especially, again, Amberlynn gave consent in her video. Please don't forget that. But um, the thing is, is that, yeah, you filmed people, Amber, for years without their consent. Really egregious. You filmed really egregious situations and it's wrong. It's wrong to do what you did, okay? And so, yeah, now people are not going to feel sympathy for you. If a public figure you know, got filmed, maybe other people would feel more sympathy for them because they're innocent in a lot of negative things. The bottom line, Chantal, is no one will treat you like the reaction channels. And I think that's what she's finding out. The problem for her is now that she is no longer camming up, which is honestly, honestly, it's one of the most asinine thing as I've ever heard. Because if you know anything about like a lot of like streamers in general, like, you know, not just on YouTube, but just gaming streamers or whatever, so many of different communities are not their visual likeness is not there. And it's not an issue. It's only an issue for Foodie Beauty because she thinks that people that are in any way similar to her should not have the right to have an opinion. And you just don't want to be criticized. Chantal, just say that you don't want to be criticized. You're in the wrong job. Get a new job. Delete your YouTube channel. You're in the wrong job. So basically, the point of the story is... It blows my mind that she's still raging at reaction channels while she is bedbound. And supposedly, from my understanding, she's not walking anymore. 
indefinitely, which is terrible. And I wish you the best with your health. I hope that changes. But it blows my mind that she thinks that everyone on YouTube will be treated the same way. I'm going to put it to you in the easiest terms possible. Um, have you ever dated somebody and you know about their other relationships or you see how like an ex of yours uh, treated other people that they've dated and they treat you worse or better? Yeah, because in life, everyone doesn't get treated the same. People treat you depending on their thoughts about you. Let's move on to her deleted community page post. Okay, so here's just one of her deleted community page posts. I just like to say that all of her community page posts mean nothing to me, less than snow water, because for some reason she doesn't understand. If you want people to take you seriously, I can understand deleting some community page posts. I can. But like deleting everything you say. Okay. Attention girl world community. Uh, this guy was never ever a part of my chats after he was doxxed and found out to be a blank. Uh, yeah, you were like always talking about him and saying positive things about him but you know what there is a girl world reactor who is still doing something with somebody after she found out something about this person try again bored blah 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 also to the person threatening to sue me no one is going to issue a warrant for my arrest for saying something that is true about you especially when all you do on your channel is talk crap about me and make up dumb theories that aren't true i also won't be going to canada for a few years at least so good luck for those who have no idea what i'm talking about better off have a nice day and she deleted that okay She's also posted a lot of really, like, very, like, very bad, very low community page posts. I'm not going to be reading them. They're just, like, very bad. Okay. This is not good either, but this is something that I have something to say about. Okay. First of all, as far as somebody, I don't know who's threatening to sue Foodie Beauty, but I'm going to say this. Foodie Beauty has said that she is going to sue French Fry Girl a million times. And she said that she would sue her because she's saying untrue things about her. She's saying that she sued her because of the cat. At the end of the day, how can you be mad? I don't know if this is actually happening. Who would want to, like actually sue Chantal but if this is really happening I don't know if it is or not but if it is happening who cares that this person is trying to sue you or saying anything or whatever when you constantly do it yourself that's why I have no sympathy for people like Amber who are upset after she gave consent uh for people to film her that somebody filmed her and now she's upset you did it for years to people in very bad situations Chantal you have threatened people for a very long time to threaten them. Why are you upset now? As far as her talking to somebody who was, he was like a big person in her chat and later on people found out certain things about him. For some reason, and this goes hand in hand, which is why I'm reading it. For some reason, Foodie Beauty continuously compares herself to reaction channels. Be like, okay, she's saying that she may have done something, but there's a reaction channel that's doing something that's worse. The problem is, is that you're not her, she's not you, and it doesn't absolve you. And that's what I'm going to end on. This does, no matter what anybody else does that's bad or considered bad or whatever, it never absolves your actions and your behavior. What Amber Lynn likes to do is say, but this person got away with something bad. Why can't I? Chantal, if a person in your community or whatever is doing something that people don't like, literally nothing to do with you. This is what it is. She believes that if a reaction channel did something that she considers bad or is bad, right? then that means that anything that she does that is equally as bad is suddenly okay because somebody else did it. That would be an example of flawed logic, Chantal, like you say reaction channels have. All right, so that's about it for Foodie Beauty. Let's move on to a Pokemon Go update. So let's move on to a Pokemon Go update. These are the raids that I did for Landorus. Landorus had a new move called Sandseer Storm, which I really hope you got yourself one if you play because this move in my opinion i've tried landris now with this new move he is way better in all the leagues it powers up really fast it's super effective like it's just like it's just a harder hitting move it's just a really good move for the pokemon and i really hope you got yourself at least one there was supposed to be like you know more like shiny odds supposedly i don't know but i just got like i think two shinies and I've done so many raids, as many raids as I could do a day with the five remote raids and the local raids, and I have not gotten 
100% IB, which is what I wanted because I had a bunch of shinies from the last time. I mean, it's random number generator. I've already ranted and raved many times about how upset I am about the, you know, cap on remote rating. I don't think it's fair. I honestly think it's ridiculous and I think it needs to change because it keeps me very unhappy in that level in the game. And I've said it before, people want to raid more than five times a day remotely because they're trying to get either a shundo, which is very rare. I mean, it is rare you know, 100% shiny, or at least they're trying to get a full 100% IB. And in the Master League, which is where I would only use this Pokemon, it's good to have 100% IB. In the in the Great League, you don't want that. But in the Master League, which this Pokemon would literally only be used in the Master League, yes, you do want that. So, I mean, it's it's there is definitely a hindrance, if that's a real word. There's hindering in the game, in my opinion, with remote rating. But that is not what I want to talk to you about, okay? I would like to go on a Pokemon Go rant today, if I could. Well, why not? What Kermit is going to stop me? Okay, I would like to discuss the idea of how ridiculous it is that people who are at level 50, and I know what people would say about this, that you don't need to be an experienced player to get to level 50. You just need to do the task that they ask. But there are some people that like just baffle me they are at level 50 they've been playing the game for years on end they know how this goes this is not like i understand if this is the first time that you're you know playing up against this raid boss that you don't know anything about him this pokemon can be completely taken down with three players that have the right counters and i want to talk about the right counters in a minute but Basically, I think it's wild that people that are at level 50 have been playing for years and know that this Pokemon can be taken down with three trainers, leave you at the end of the raid to battle this yourself. And no, I'm not talking about those people that leave at the last second and you lose your raid pass. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about leaving where, yes, they let you leave the raid. They give you enough time to leave. But oh, there's my shiny. There's my first shiny. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, but I think it's in the poorest of taste and against like, you know, in a game, there should be being a good player. Okay. And I understand that everybody's out for themselves in Pokemon Go. I am not naive. Okay. But I think it's wild that somebody who knows that this uh, Pokemon can be completely, completely taken down with three players leaves. And I'm going to tell you why I believe that they leave you in the raid and they don't stay to battle the Pokemon. Here we go. So I think that a lot of people that are well-versed in this game leave you at the last second to battle this with two people instead of the three that they knew that they could win with, okay, in the party. It's because they don't want to press the button. Let, let, me, let me talk to you about something that goes on in Pokemon Go that I don't ever, like, listen, I watch a lot a lot of Pokemon Go um, videos, and I, I don't ever hear anybody talk about this. Maybe I'm watching the wrong videos, but uh, you let me know if you watch Pokemon Go videos, if you've ever heard this being talked about. Look, when there is a large party, let's say 12 or 13 people or 20 people in a raid, if you really think that every single person in that raid is pressing the button, you would probably be incorrect because... Uh, when you press the button, when you go into a raid, unless you miss the attack, like you see how right now, like um, Landorus, like landed an attack against Mewtwo. Basically, unless you jump away from the attack, your Pokemon gets hit over and over again. Basically, the Pokemon faints and then you need revives to revive him. And if you're not getting those revives, those things that needed to revive the Pokemon, just stay with me here. Uh, if you're not getting those revives from like you know, Pokestops, you're going to have to buy them. People don't want their Pokemons to faint. They don't feel like doing the raid. They want the raid to be done for them by other people so they don't press the button. And I think what a lot of these level 50 people who have played the game for years, who absolutely 100% know, they know that you can beat Landorus with three uh, Pokemon players with the right counters. They know. They still leave because they don't want to press the button. They're used to being in a group of 8 or 9 or 20 or 12. Uh, especially like what I've seen in very busy areas where there can be 20 people per raid. What I'm trying to get at is the reason that in my opinion, these people on your friends list who are level 50 or who are not level 50, people that know, let's just, I, the reason I use level 50 is because people who have been playing the game for years who are level 50 should already know this. But anyone 
unless they just genuinely don't know because they can give those people the benefit of the, of the doubt the people that don't know that you can beat this pokemon with three people that's fine but those people that are seasoned players that are leaving you in alone in like these raids they're doing that because they don't want to press the button they're used to raiding with 12 people, 9 people, 8 people, and also not pressing the button. Yes, exposed. There's the answer. They don't want to, a lot of the times, put in the work into the raid in order to take out a raid boss. You have to. You see how, like, on the screen, there's a button that's being pressed. Yeah, that was me pressing it. My point is people don't want to press the button. They want to do absolutely no work in the raids. And they want to be able to be rewarded with a Pokemon for them doing no work. What a big shocker. Nobody wants to do nothing, anything. Okay, double negative. My point here is this. I think that, like, I don't want to have people like that on my friends list. And I won't. If you don't want to do the raid, then don't do the raid, darling. Don't do it. But don't leave at 20 seconds in. If you're staying there until 20 seconds, I understand people might say, uh, oh, well, you know, maybe a person comes in later on, like at the last minute and it's four or five people. I don't care. If you don't want to do the raid with three people and it's like already 30 seconds, leave it 30 seconds. Don't leave it the last minute because you, a seasoned player, don't want to push the button. I think it's just laziness. But the majority of these, you know, higher up players with the levels, people that have been playing since 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, people that know the game, they're only leaving because they, they want you to do all the work. They want other people to do the work. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is Pokemon counters. So if you're just starting with the game or you haven't played the game in a long time or you may not know, you usually should not be taking the battle party. Like, you know, when the raid is counting down, uh, Pokemon Go will suggest a raid party to you. Pokemons that they think will be helpful in taking down the raid boss. Okay, you should not go with that. It is a po it is a person's responsibility who is playing games and who is doing the raid to know the counters. Familiarize yourself with the counters before you get into the raid. For example, um, you know, like... Landorus is weak to water and ice, so you want water and ice Pokemon. Unfortunately, Pokemon Go doesn't always give you the right counters in the battle party. You see this a lot with people that are just starting to play the game, which I understand, but there's actually no excuse for a seasoned player to be doing this because if you don't have the right counters, you will not beat the raid boss and you'll lose your raid pass. And you can do the raid again, but if the 40 something minutes they give you expires, then you won't be able to actually get the raid boss or a chance to catch him. All right, well, that's about it for today's video. Thank you so very much for watching today. I really appreciate you being here. Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below on the video. If you enjoyed today's video, check out these videos, this video that's popping up here. You may enjoy it, you may not enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it and you watch it, leave it a dislike, be a friend. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next time, bye. Excuse me, Mr. Skunk, do you know Amberlynn Reed? Mr. Skunk, have you been watching Girl World? Excuse me, do you know Amberlynn Reed? Excuse me, Mr. Skunk, do you know Amberlynn Reed? What about Fody Beauty? Don't run away. The truth is behind you.